Hey, family, you were not expecting to see me now, I'm pretty sure, and um, I know it's going to take a while for people to get on, but I wanted to release this word. Bless you. Thank you, my people. Good to see you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Um, I wanted to do this uh, short scope, and I always say short, but I, I'm promising myself, I'm looking at the time. Hey, hey, daughter, good to see you. Uh, it's 410. I'm like 440, I, I want to be out this piece. That's the plan. Okay, so let me start by saying um, bless God for this past weekend. Uh, it was an amazing weekend. Hey, Ty, good to see you. It was an amazing time in the Lord. Ministry was going forth um, pretty much all weekend for me. On Friday, I got an opportunity. Hey, good to see you, Savvy. Good to see you. Hey, Doug, how are you? Bless you. Good to see you from Barstow. Um, and so this past weekend, Kingdom Swag is on. Good to see you. Um, had an opportunity to go see a, a, an amazing woman of God um, minister on deliverance. And so I'm not saying that this piggybacked that conversation. Good to see you, Kingdom Swag. Um, but it, it, it is it's profound to see that we're talking about deliverance, that we're still talking about deliverance. And I think there's a reason why we're still talking about deliverance. And so I'm going to get to that in a minute. I, I don't want to put my cart before the horse, but I'm already feeling the spirit of God on this. And so I'm going to try to take, take my time and um, really share this with you. Bless you. Good to see you, April. So um, as I said before, uh, amazing woman of God um, walked um, heavy in deliverance and uh, Sometimes people are not ready for deliverance. Sometimes people want to hold on to their brokenness and to, I want to nurse that wound. I want to remind myself of, of how it used to be and how people hurt me and want, wronged me. And I really don't want to be, be free, right? So you can't force people to be free. We can invite them in. Bless you. Good to see you. Um, you know, we, we, we can invite people in to be saved. You know, are you, I'm telling you, Savvy, I'm telling you, I'm trying to hold it. I really am. I really am Jesus, but I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited about this word. Um, okay. So I was talking about this weekend and then Saturday I was with my family, my fam. Hey, Ty, I was with my family. Um, good to see you, Elaine. Good to see you. I was in uh, Bryan, Texas with my fam and um, it was a kingdom conclave. It was a building up and really it was the collective words that God was speaking to us. Hey, yes, that's my dad. I'm number one son, just in case you didn't know. Anyway, but um, so we, uh, we walked together and we spent some time together in ministry, my sisters and brothers, to uh, release the word over the house for 2016. And really what we were hearing God saying and what he was trying to develop in us for the next season and really pushing us into that place. And so we had words about you know, about um, us holding back and us being soldiers on, on the field who are, who are broken and don't have any armor on. And that's many of us, right? That we don't have godly wisdom, you know, that we, 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 we want to minister, that God has placed something on the inside of us. He's given us a dispensation of his Holy Spirit. He's given us the package, right, on the inside. He's delivered it to us. We've got it, but we don't know how to use it. We don't have the wisdom of how to use it, right? Knowing what our gifts are, knowing where he's called us. And I'll just give it to you, the short version which you probably have seen if you haven't it's on my youtube page under dr deandrea but literally uh, god gives us first and he gives us information he tells us who we are that's information i give you information i'm telling you who you are that's just information it doesn't give you power to do anything with it but it's information and he's telling you who you are now just because he's told you who you are don't start running off don't start running and going to do anything yet. He's just giving you information. Now, has he said to start now? Has he given you any instructions yet? No, he's giving you information. I'm telling you who you are. I'm giving you your identity. Now I'm revealing to you who you are. Now that I've revealed who you are and now you know who you are and you're standing before me. Now you're listening for me for the sound of my voice that you might know what to do next. Now I can give you information. Now I can tell you how to use that gift. I can tell you how to wield what I've placed on the inside of you. He begins to tell tell you now here's the next step and then now that he's given you the tools and he's told you how to use them now you need what direction you need location where am I supposed to wield this gift is it going to be in a house God is it going to be in a ministry already God are you calling me to plant a ministry are you sending me out apostolically to go to different places to do a work right so God has to give us instructions and so this is what we were talking about this weekend I haven't even started flowing yet because I'm about to give you the deliverance word that you truly need today I'm telling you I'm excited about this. Now listen, 
Deliverance is just the start of the process. It's the beginning. Now, oftentimes we think that when people are delivered, that's a done thing. But listen, we talk about people being healed, don't we? Being healed and we recognize that people have been delivered from some things, some things that have been a part of their generational line, a part, bless you, thank you for, for giving them those details, I love it. And uh, people have uh, had things in their family and their situations, be it you know, a sexual sins, addictions, and things like that, that are a part of their bloodline or in their life. Now, God delivers you out of that situation. But what you find is you're still stumbling around. You still find yourself, you know, drawn to some of those things and some of those things drawn back to you. You're like, but wait a minute, but I was delivered, God. I was delivered. So why are these things still coming at me? Why am I still dealing with some of these things? And so let's dissect that for a second. Healing is the process. You being delivered happens like that. You being delivered happens like that. God delivered you right? The healing is what takes time. That is over time. And you guys are saying, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if I believe that. Well, let's, let's, let's look at the word. Let's go to the word. I'm going to take you to it. So, um, let's go to John. We're going to John 11, John 11. And we're going to talk about Lazarus. Let's use him for a perfect example. Now, I've got to start by giving credit where credit is due. Y'all know, um, and those who are very close to me know very clearly that um, I'm not a big one. Um, no, I am a big one. I'm trying to think of a nice way to say it, but I can't. I'm just going to be really, really just raw with it. When someone takes something that someone has spent time on and don't give credit where credit is due, God is going to demand something of them right? There is no anointing on it if you didn't get it directly from God or if you don't give honor where honor is due. So I truly believe in giving honor where honor is due. When my apostle speaks something and I speak it back, I say, as my apostle says, right? So I give credit right now to my best friend, Erica. And we were having this conversation and gleaning back and forth and we were just chopping it up and like, she said it and I was like, oh my God, this is so good. This is so good. This is going to be a scope. And she said, well, you do it because you know I won't. So bless God, she gave me permission. And so this is good. So Lazarus, we're going to talk about Lazarus. Now we know the story. Jesus hears about Lazarus. He loves them, right? This is his family, Martha and Mary. This is his family. Bless you, Erica. So this is his family. He loves them. Now listen, I love this because I'm going to start earlier than I was planning to start. Mary's crying. She's upset. We know Martha's upset about their, about their brother. And of course they say like, where were you? You know, if you were here, my brother would not have died. So we, 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 we know the Lord gets the message and he hears and he waits. So he says, yes, he's sick or he's sleeping, right? And they're saying he's going to awake. He knows that he's dead. He waits. By the time he gets there, how many days has it been, everybody? Bible scholars, right? So it's been four days. So he comes and he shows up. They show him the area. He goes to the grave. He has a sad heart. He says, take the stone away. And someone says, by now, his body has a bad smell. It's been four days. He's, and he says, did I not say that if you would believe, you would see the shining greatness of God? Believe. Okay, so this is belief. He rolls the stone away and he speaks. Now, I love this. Now, listen what he does first. So we recognize that deliverance is not through us as a vessel. It's through Christ. He decides when you're going to be delivered, how you're going to be delivered, what that day is. So sometimes we see people who are stumbling around in sins and brokenness and we say but God I laid hands and Lord I went through deliverance with them and God they weren't delivered well times and seasons times and seasons right it's not based upon us it's based upon God's timing person's not ready the Lord is like there's something I'm still dealing with them in there's something else that needs to happen so even I was speaking to a, um, one of my daughters and I was talking to them about even the prophetic word that goes forth sometimes sometimes people stand right before you and those who are in the office of the prophet I'm speaking to you those who are in the office of the prophet now mind you I said I have the gift of prophecy I am not in the office but I walk in prophecy so Sometimes people will stand before you, even those in the office, and you see nothing. You get nothing, absolutely nothing, as you begin to look at them. I don't know what to say to them. Now, please don't just make something up. And how many of you been there where they made something up? And you're like, that is not the God I know. I don't know who you're talking to, right? So sometimes God won't allow you to see something, and I truly believe it, because let me tell you why. Because if you, as the person who's standing before the prophet, have not spent time with God yourself to hear from him yourself, God is not going to let man speak to you. We're his sheep. 
We're his people. And he says, I want you to hear a word. Don't go running for a prophetic word. If you're not going to take the time to sit and hear my voice, why do you think I'm going to let the man of God or woman of God speak something to you? You're not even spending time trying to hear yourself. So I truly believe that sometimes you won't be able to see something. You won't be able to see it because God is saying no. And so what you say is I need you to get intimate with God. And right now I don't really get much from you. And maybe it's that God wants you to sow more time with him. He wants you to get more intimate with him that you might be able to hear the word from him directly. So I, that's an aside. Let me get back to Lazarus. Sorry. Every now and then y'all know I dropped some of these wisdom nuggets in the way. But here we go. So we find he's rolled the stone away and he's telling him very clearly, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know you always hear me, but I've said this for the people standing here so that they may believe you have sent me. So first he acknowledged God. So then he goes through this process. Here's where the deliverance happens. Verse 43. And he said this, called with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. So literally when we're dealing with demons and spirits, our job is not to tarry a long time. Come out. Come out. That's the word. Not, okay, and then, and Terry, and okay, and now we got it, and then come out of them right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. So that's what he said. He says, Lazarus, come out. Deliverance. Now, the man who had been dead, listen to me, he came out. His hands and feet were tied in grave clothes. Now, here comes the revelation. A white cloth was tied around his face. Jesus said to the people, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Now, listen. Now, listen. Deliverance happened instantaneously. <laughs> Deliverance. Come out. He came out. But what happened when he came out? He was still bound in those death clothes. He had a cloth tied around his face. He had grave clothes all over his body. His waist was girded about. His legs were bound. His feet were bound. His arms were tied around him. Jesus, do you hear me? He was delivered, but he was not healed. Come on now. Jesus. Oh, yes. You, I'm, you're with me, Erica. I'm with you. Are you, see, are you see what I'm going now, April? Come on now. So deliverance happens instantaneously. God speaks that thing and it is done. But your process is the healing that comes over time. Comes over time. Some things you've been delivered from, you know you've been delivered from it. You're like, why is this thing still drawing me? Why is this thing still reaching for me? Why is this thing still there? Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm not done yet. Got two scriptures and a cup of tea. All right. So got two scriptures and a cup of tea. Bless, bless God. Okay. So the reason why is we're talking about this healing process. So you've been delivered. You've heard the word of God said, come out of them. You are done. It's done right? I'm delivered. But why am I still stumbling around? Why are some of these still coming to me? Come on, Elaine. You know, I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you, right? Why am I still stumbling around? I'm still stumbling around because I'm not yet healed. Healing is a process. It's a process. Now, like I said, why do we know it's a process? You had tea early. That's all right. Yep. Come on. And, and some tea. Let's do it. So we find in Matthew, let's go to Matthew 12. Now we know this is quoted in two different places in Luke and in Matthew. And I believe it's both uh, uh, around the same place in both chapters. Um, but we've got Matthew 12 is what we're going to focus on. Um, and let me get you there. We are looking at verse 43 through 45, and this is in the Living Bible, and I really like the way it puts it. Yes, healing is a process. It's a process. Now, Matthew 12, thank you for putting that up there, Elaine. It says, this evil nation is like a man possessed by a demon. It says, for the, if the demon leaves, y'all know where I'm going now, it goes into the deserts for a while, seeking rest but finding none. Then it says, I will return to the man I came from. So it returns, and I love this version. It says, it returns and finds the man's heart. Jesus, I love this version. Woo, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's good, that's good, that's good. That's good. Thank you. I love that. So it returns, this demon returns and finds the man's heart clean, but empty, Jesus. So deliverance, I cleaned up your heart. Basically, I took this thing out. I took it out of you. Like God said, I'm going to take out the stony heart, but I'm going to place in a heart of flesh. Now listen, I, I, I placed in you the heart of flesh that can. Now listen, it didn't say will. 
It says, can love God, can love his people, can serve God, right? I'm placing in my heart in you that can do what I've called it to do, but will it? Now listen, so he returns and finds the man's heart clean, dry places. Come on now, come on. You know, I'm getting there. Hold on, hold on, sunshine. I'm getting there. So the heart is clean, but empty, empty. Then the demon finds seven other spirits more evil than itself and all enter the man and live in him. And what it said in his case, his situation, his circumstance, his life chances, right? It, it's worse than it was before. It's worse than it was when the demon was dwelling in him. Now listen, come on. You know what I'm about to say, Natasha. Come on now. Clean, but empty. How many of us, our hearts are clean, but they're empty. They're empty. Come on, just like the grave. Are you hearing me? You, so deliverance went forth. He called him forth. Lazarus came out, but he was still bound. He was still bound. So listen, now that you've delivered that thing out of somebody, they need to place within them quickly the word of God. They need to place Jesus in that place. Jesus needs to be transplanted into that place. So just because you've been delivered, you get back up again, go back out into the same situation just as bound as you were before and then worse. Now you've turned over to a retrobate mind because you left the place empty. Now listen, sweep it clean. Yes, now you've been delivered. But what have you placed into that place? Now you're empty, empty. I'm delivered, but I don't have God. I don't have Christ. I don't have an understanding. I've not yet been converted, right? I've been saved. Come on. I'm speaking apostle. I'm, I'm speaking apostle Greg. Now I have been saved, but not converted. I've received a measure of grace. I've received an understanding of who Jesus Christ is, but I've not fully received him on the inside that my life might be changed. Jesus. So I'm telling you that deliverance is, a, is, is, is something that happens instantaneously. Deliverance is for everybody, but it's just the beginning of the process. It's the beginning of your process. Healing and wholeness, healing and wholeness are a process. Come on, what does the word say about sanctification? The Holy Spirit is sanctifying us daily. That's a continual process. It didn't say you received the Holy Spirit, you said yes to Jesus, it's all done. All your generational curses and everything in your life, it's just done. The taste of smoking cigarettes is gone. The taste of alcohol is gone. The desire for sex is just gone. That's not how it happened. Well, hey, maybe I'm just going to testify on myself. That ain't how it happened to me. I got saved, knew Jesus, and then was like, yeah, I got my mom saved and my sister. I was like, y'all cool? Y'all good? Y'all good? Okay, I'm going back out to the world. Peace. I got y'all good? Y'all good? You good with God? You good with God? Okay, you saved? Great. Peace. I'm going back out to the world. I'll see y'all later. So those saved, I was not yet converted. Took several more years before I was finally converted and God is still converting me. Are you hearing me? Come on now. So I'm saying deliverance, it's instantaneous for those of you. See, okay, thank you, Natasha. Don't leave me alone, y'all. Don't let it just be me. <laughs> Don't let it just be me. Come on. So you've been saved. I love it. You've been saved. You received salvation, but not conversion. You might've been convicted of your sins. Come on, Bettina. Convicted of your sins enough to come to Christ, convicted enough to come to him, but not to let him transform you. The transformation is what takes the time. <laughs> Thank you, Savvy. So, I mean, I just want you to know the room was swept clean. It was devoid of any knowledge, devoid of any understanding, devoid of any experience of Jesus Christ. Hey, Amber, good to see you. So, I mean, it's swept clean. The space is clean. Bless you. Bless you, sunshine. Receive that. Hey, Amanda, good to see you. Bless you. Bless you, Natasha. I'm telling you, swept clean. I love it when I think about that. Like, the space was swept clean. So first you think to yourself, okay, come on now. Oh, bless God. Thank you, April. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. You know, I... Every time I read that scripture, I was like, Lord, it doesn't make sense. You cleaned up the house, but, the, but it's clean. So then why would these demons come back? And I kept saying, bless you. I kept saying, 
this don't make no sense, Lord, because you swept it clean. So why would this come out? So, so Alice, um, this is Matthew, Matthew 12, Matthew 12, 43 through 45. So Matthew 12, 43 through 45. And the other scripture I, I came from is about Lazarus. And of course that's in John 11, John 11. Oh, no problem. So you've got those to look at. I mean, it just completely, come on, clean but empty. Oh, yeah, that is. That is a whole series. Clean but empty. So clean. You know, so God has, has he's leveled some things off. He's taken some things off you. Some heavy weights are gone. Go ahead. That's all right. Listen to the replay. I'm sorry, Shamika. You know, he lifts it off of you. So you delivered immediately, instantaneously. So deliverance does not happen over time. I truly believe this. I believe this with every fiber of my being. When we are delivered, it is done. Though we don't feel like it. But why we don't feel like it is because the healing takes time. When God says you're delivered from something, you are delivered immediately. It is done. It's done. You know, drop the mic. It is done. You are healed. I mean, you're delivered. So God is taking you out some things. He's delivered you. you he delivered you from it. So now the enemy can't torment you about that thing. But where you are in your flesh, where you are in your walk, it has to do with this being clean. Come on. But empty. So the, the space was swept clean and empty, devoid of any knowledge, devoid of any understanding, uh, devoid of any experience. Listen, devoid of any experience of Christ. He wants us to experience him. That's why religion does not work with this thing. Are you hearing me? There is no religion that's tied up in this. It's about relationship. Amen. It's relationship. Come on. But that healing part, though, I'm with you. Who, Jesus, you like, but that healing, come on. Come on, Lord. Now that thing right there, that healing though, Lord, come on now. Find yourself a year later still kind of feeling the same emotions and feelings. Yes, healing hurts. What do you do when you know you're sinning but are finding it hard to let go? Dare I say enjoying it? That's, that's still flat. That means you've not been converted. So you've been saved but not converted. When you're converted, your desires change. They change, right? So God may have delivered you from something. Come on, Elaine, this ba baby, this message is so for you. This message is so for you, sweetheart. Yes, yes, yes. Bless you, Erica. I'm telling you that, that God wants us to be whole. And he wants us to understand that this is not something that happens overnight. So though you've laid at the altar and you've tarried and you've cried and you have, you know, you've, you, you've wrenched out your eyes in the process of what you're dealing with. You've, you've, you've ripped your garments off. Jesus, deliver me. God said, I will, and I will to do it, and you are now delivered. And then you leave, and you say, God, what happened? I'm still struggling with this thing. God, I, I still feel bound in this area. Come on, Lazarus. I still feel bound. I, I have this cloth around my face. I can't really see clearly. I, I have my arms are, are tied. God, I can't, I can't work for you. I can't do ministry. My legs are tied. God, I can't seem to run this race. God said, it's healing. And they begin to take the cloth off, the death clothes off. Come on, come on, layer by layer. Bettina, you know what I'm saying? Layer by layer by layer by layer by layer by layer. God does it in layers. He said, if I took it all off at one time, you couldn't handle it. By layer, by layer, by layer. And what is it? Come on, now I want to tell you. It's, it's as our knowledge of him grows. That empty place that's now swept clean because there's no knowledge of him. There is no relationship with him. You've not asked him to come and make his abode in you yet. When you ask him to come and make his abode in you, he fills up that place. Those demons look in the window and they say, no, Jesus has set up shop in this camp. Jesus set up shop. I don't, I think we need to find another house. Yes, he makes the difference. Progressive sanctification, Shamika. You on it? You're on it. Woo, that's good. Progressive sanctification. It is over time. Sanctification is continual, continuous. Jesus, this is good. This is good to me. Is this good to y'all? Is it just me? This is good to me. This is good to me. This answers so many questions about my own life. When I was taken out of something and I knew that God did something. But when I looked at the pattern, come on, the pattern of my life, the pattern of my activity, I was like, you know, other people are like, I don't know that you've really been saved. I don't really know you've been delivered from that because you're still kind of dabbling. Right? God had delivered me from it. But 
I had not come to a knowledge of him in that place. Are you hearing me? So even we're talking about the heart of man, but let's think of the seed of your emotions. Don't abort the process of healing. Stay in that place. I'm saying, think about it. The seat of your area where you need deliverance or where you've received deliverance, that seed of that area, maybe your heart, but let me say, so let's say if it's in your sexuality, because you've been promiscuous. You've been promiscuous because you've been raped and you were molested by a family member. You found yourself out in the street sleeping with a lot of people. Didn't know why you were doing, but you found yourself at that place. You've been raped and maybe someone took advantage of you and you find yourself caught up in sexual relationships and you're like, I can't seem to stop and I don't know what's happening to me, but I'm in this place and, I'm, and, and, I, and, I, don't, and I know I don't wanna do this. And every time I do it, I feel, I feel broken and I feel dirty and I, and, I, and I start crying after and I don't know how to get out of this cycle, God, but I know you delivered me. I know you spoke to me in this area. So God comes and makes his abode in your sexual desires. Listen to me, where he begins to give you his desires. Not just for holiness, but that you would be whole in that area. The broken pieces of you that men had touched or women had touched and taken from you. God begins to, to put and sew the sinew and sew the bones and sew the meat and sew all those places back together again. And he said, I'm coming in. If you let me reside and make my abode in that place where you were broken, if you allow me to come into that place, then I'm going to make my abode there. And I'm going to sew you up. I'm going to take every piece that man has taken from you. I'm going to bring it all back together and I'm going to make you whole. I'm going to make you whole. And then when I make you whole, you'll know your worth. You'll know your worth. Jesus, come on. Whatever that area is, drug addiction, alcohol, it's a taste thing, but it's a, it's an escape thing. Those kinds of drugs and alcohol, it's an escapism. I do it to escape. Think about me being addicted to TV. You know, it's the soundtrack of my life. I'd come home, the TV's on. I'm not even looking at it. I'm in another room, single woman, but I needed the TV on. It kept me company. And I'd watch it all night. On the weekends, be depressed. As long as I could watch a happy show and make me laugh, I felt good. And I lost myself in the midst of television. An escapism, I'm saying, so this is any kind of addiction, right? We're not just going to talk about sexual addiction or alcohol or, or drugs, but even television. So that was it for me. I'm, I'm talking on myself. Couldn't get past it. And I'm like, and so the moments where I'd have to go into a fast, I could give up food easy. No problem. And the Lord said, what's the greater sacrifice? What's the greater sacrifice? I don't want to talk about that, Lord. We on a food fast. We're on a food fast. I don't want to talk about that. He said, but what's the greater sacrifice? That's what I'm asking you to give up. And I gave up. Yes, I am. Come on. So I gave up TV during my fast. The first day felt like I had the shakes and jitters. Kept looking at the TV, looking at me. And I'm like, I know you want to come on. And I want you to come on too. I would love to turn you on. I know I miss you too. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's where I was. And we look at the TV and I'm like, I got to find somewhere. I got to get out of the house. Shamika, I'm telling you, I got to get out of the house. I need to get in my car and go somewhere. If I just got to go to the store and walk around. <laughs> because I'm like, I, I, Lord, I'm going to break down. I'm like, but, but if I watch it on the internet, then it's not really like really watching TV because I'm really just watching YouTube and it's not really TV. I'm talking, uh, I'm talking about myself. <laughs> need my own deliverance. And so then it was like, no, because literally the silence, the silence, I'm talking about these empty rooms. Are you hearing me? I'm talking about the room that swept clean, that swept clean. I'm telling you, I, I, the silence was deafening. The silence in my head. Because then I think to myself, is he going to speak to me? Or am I just going to hear silence? And then do I deserve to hear from him? What have I gone through? Oh my gosh, all of that in my head. And so the TV blocks out the sound. The, the TV blocks out me trying to hear that maybe he's going to rebuke me or he's going to tell me I did something wrong. He's going to remind me of my mistakes. But let me tell you, as soon as I turned off the TV, what he spoke to me was affirmation. What he spoke to me was wholeness and healing. And guess what? And knowledge of him. What he spoke is, here's your destiny. I see where you are, but I see where you shall be. I see where you are, but I see where you shall be, and you shall be there. Jesus. My God, that just blesses me. And so, you know, 
that swept clean place, if it's not filled with knowledge, understanding of him, if we do not make in our heart or in those places where we've had bondage, if we do not make an abode for him in that place, we'll forever be looking for our healing. Yes, he delivered you. He said, Lazarus, come forth. But Lazarus still was tied and bound with the grave clothes. And that took a process, layer by layer by layer by layer to get out. So I just want to encourage you. I just want to say to you, whatever part of your journey that you're on, if you have received deliverance, and listen, when I say received it, I mean received it. I don't mean someone laid hands on you. I'm not saying someone spoke it, but when they did whatever they did, you said, yes, Lord, I'm in agreement with you. That's how you get delivered. Deliverance takes an agreement. Agree agree with God. He, they say, here's deliverance. Come out of that person. You agree. And once you agree, that's the beginning of your process. It's the beginning of your journey. I just stopped along the way to encourage you, to exhort you and to say, do not, do not abort the process. Just know you are delivered. You are delivered. You are delivered. Daughters and sons, you are delivered. Men and women of God, you are delivered. You're delivered. It, you're delivered. It, you're delivered. I just want to say it. You're delivered. It is done. It is finished. But your process, the sanctification, the healing takes you making God your abode in that place. So if it's sexual sin, if it's sexual sin, let God make his abode in you in that place. If it's any addiction, let God make his abode with you in that place. Let him make his abode so that the place that's swept clean, now that you've been delivered, the enemy cannot come back in with his friends. Let him set up shop where you are. Jesus. Yes, that's good. That's good. Forgiveness. Yes. Refill with Jesus. Come on, Bettina. Refill. I'm telling you, Bettina and I have this role th today, and maybe this week we've been talking. Re everything. Re, right, come on. I'm telling you, restore, revive, refresh, restart. Come on. Reveal, represent. And you know, that's my favorite one. God wants to represent many of you in this season. He wants to represent you to the world. To, he's presented you in a former season. People had a glimpse of who you were. They had a glimpse of, you know, they saw, they saw a bit of who God had put on the inside of you. They saw a bit of it. But God said, in this season, I want to represent you. I want to launch you back out. Come on, repent is a good one too. Ha, <laughs> that's good. Bettina, I know you can go on and on. Come on now. Jesus, refill. That's good. Refill. That's awesome. That's good. So in this season, know that you are delivered. It was done. It was done. Refuel. Come on, Bettina. <laughs> Come on. I'm telling you. Reignite. Allow Christ to reignite you. Refuel. Come on now. Allow him to reignite you. Allow him to represent you. You are delivered. You're just going through the process of healing. My God. Woo! Okay. So that's all I had to share with you. How did I do? I did well, y'all. 33 minutes. Hallelujah. I said I was just going to do 30 minutes. So was this good? Talk to me. Thank you, Natasha. You've been on a couple of times, haven't you? I know this is not your first time, is it? Let me know who I got. What are y'all getting? What are your thoughts? Did you receive something from this? Did it bless you? And for those of you who are watching this in the replay, I'm speaking to you too. I'm taking a moment out to speak to the replay viewers. I pray um, that you receive this word, that you get it down into your spirit, that when God delivered you, now listen, man or woman may have laid their hands on you, but it wasn't them. It was God. God chose the time and season. He chose the time and season to deliver you out of that issue. And he delivered you. It was done finished. You're delivered. Your healing is a process. Your healing is a process. Thank you, God. All right. We're good. Oh, see, I thought so. Oh my God. Bless God. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad to have you. Thank you, God. Thank you. I'm so glad that um, we got we had someone new on here. But bless you. I pray that you received it. Did you guys get something from it? Did I hope that it transforms your thinking and your perception? I mean, in this season, bless you, Elaine. I, I, I pray that it does. I'm telling you, I got so excited about it. Erica I, and I on the phone, we were like, like shouting across the phone lines with each other because it was like, what? Oh my God. It was just so awesome. <laughs> oh, bless you, April. Love you. Recommit. Amen. All right. Bless you, Amber. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Wisdom speaks. Amen. All right. Refreshed. Amen. All right. So go into the rest of your Tuesday, victorious conquerors, Hebrew people. And for those of you who don't know what that means, check me, check me out on YouTube, Dr. DeAndrea and watch. I am a Hebrew. It is the foundation and cornerstone of my ministry. You are Hebrews. You are Hebrews. Thank you. You are Hebrews. Yes. Come on now. Speak to yourself, Elaine. Everything's going crazy, but I'm healed. Everything's going crazy. I'm delivered. Everything's going crazy in my life, but God is healing me. He's healing me, right? I may not be healed, but he's healing me. I'm a Hebrew. I've crossed over, right? The crossing over is that I was in this place where I was bro broken. I was doing things that I didn't want to do. And I found myself that I couldn't get out of it, that this thorn was in my side. I found myself broken. I found myself reaching for things that I didn't want to reach for. Hey, hello from Queens. And, and, and God took me from this place, allowed me to cross over into my destiny. I've crossed over. I am a Hebrew. I am a Hebrew. Amen. You know, and so I pray that this blesses you. I uh, thank you for joining me. And for those who will catch the replay, bless you. And thank you for your time. Be encouraged. It's, it's, I'm telling you, it's about exhorting one another onto good works, right? Don't look behind you. Pull that rear view, view mirror out of your car. Pull it out. Do not look what's behind you for what is before you is greater, 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 greater than what's been behind you. You are delivered. All right. Mwah. I love you all. Thank you so much for joining me and I will catch you again. I know I came on a Tuesday, so I'm likely not to come tomorrow, but we'll see what God might do. But I'm glad I caught you at this time. Okay, mwah, victorious. Yes, love you. Love you too, Bettina. Mwah.